My name is Chris, and in this video I am going to demonstrate some of the physical principles uh, behind making music on string instruments using my double bass. So the, the basic way that we make music on a string instrument is to set up a standing wave in the string um, in the fundamental mode. So fix the two ends, so there's two nodes on either end, and you put an eighth note in the middle on my bass, it sounds like this. So that's a D on my bass, it's a frequency of about 73 hertz or so. Um, and if I want to get other notes on the same string, I can just change the length of the string by pressing my finger down and playing. Um, and so that's the normal way that we get notes on strings, is just by changing the length of the strings, or by changing the string that I'm playing. But of course, we know that you can set up other kinds of standing, uh, standing waves on strings, um, the overtone keys. So you can do this on, a, on string instruments pretty easily. Most string instruments can do this. So what I want to do is I want to force a node to be on the string somewhere. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly place my finger on the string, and that's going to force right there to be fixed. So it's not going to vibrate there, and that means that there's going to be an anti-node here, and an anti-node here, as well as the nodes at the end. So that sounds like this. Um, so that's a note with uh, half the wavelength, because I've divided the string in half, and twice the frequency, so uh, it's an octave higher. Um, of course, I can do this in other places on the string. I can divide the string up into other fractions. For instance, by my finger here, you get a higher note. And what I've done is I've divided the string into thirds. The string vibrates between here and here, and because the wave is repetitive, here to here vibrates, and then here to here vibrates, and then here to here vibrates. So it's divided into thirds. I can divide into other fractions, like fourths, fifths, sixths, right, sixths, and then the seventh is that one. So they get harder and harder to play just from a physical perspective um, as they get higher, and also they get out of tune uh, relative to the even tempered system, which is not something I'm going to talk about. Um, so that's the overtone series. A physicist would probably call the open string the fundamental, and then the first overtone, second overtone, third overtone. A um, musician may call it that. They also may call it with a harmonic language and call the open string the first harmonic. And then the second harmonic, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic. So then you will actually, so the language is a little bit different, so you just have to know which one you are talking about. So there's some cool musical things you can do with harmonics. Um, these might be called tricks, but they're interesting. Uh, so I'm going to play a closed string. So I'm going to use my thumb to press the string down to get a note. And then I'm going to use my uh, ring finger on my left hand and place it gently on the string as if I was going to play a harmonic. And what I'm doing is I'm dividing this new length of string up into some fractions. Um, to, ex to, to get harmonics on this new length of string. And now I can move my hand around and change the length of the string while keeping the fractional length, uh, changing the fractional length but keeping the absolute length of this wavelength right there the same. So it sounds like this. So that's a cool sound. Uh, you might call it whales or birds, but composers occasionally use it to try to convey those kind of effects. That's also called a pitch harmonic in guitarist language, when you hear like metal guitars do a lot. Okay, so the other thing that we can talk about while I'm here uh, is the phenomenon of beats. So beating occurs if you have two uh, oscillatory phenomena that you're adding together. So you're observing them at the same time. So these would be two notes, or you can also use springs or anything else. If their frequencies are very close, you get a third frequency out, which has to do with the difference between the two frequencies. Uh, so this is very easy to demonstrate on the bass for the simple fact that I, I can make harmonics that are the same note on two different strings. Other string instruments can do this too. Uh, it's particularly easy on the bass instruments, um, which would be double bass, electric bass, and the bottom string of the guitar. Um, but violinists can do this too. It's just a little bit, a little bit harder to set up. Um, it's easy because one of the harmonics of the G string is the same as one of the harmonics of the D string. And you can already hear it, but if the two uh, frequencies are not exactly the same, you get this kind of wah, wah, wah sound. You can kind of hear that. Um, I can accentuate the effect by detuning my D string. two or three hertz. 
And basses frequently use this to tune their bass because you can hear it. You can hear the beats, and when the beats go away, your bass is attuned. Like so. Um, you can also use this to tune piano. Piano singers frequently use this to, to tune pianos and other instruments as well. Okay, thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it.